Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and folks of all kind. Welcome back to part three of our lesson on conducting t-tests in SPSS. It happens to be Halloween, and so how appropriate that I am wearing my horn for you today as we talk about a data sample that involves people's reactions to miniature horses. Yes, even smaller than ponies, miniature horses are the ones that come up to about your knees. And some research students and I at Miami had access to a farm that used these horses for therapy where they would take them to um, airports and preschools and senior centers and college campuses to let people interact with their horses to make their days a little bit better. Or so they thought. Um, in all the time that the horse had, farm had been involved, um, they had not actually collected a research study um, to figure out if people's ratings about their stress and mood changed. So that's where we came in. In addition to providing a service for the farm, we were also um, getting some good practice for our student researchers in order to conduct analyses. So today we're going to be looking at a dependent samples t-test. And a dependent samples t-test um, is also known as a related samples t-test. The idea is that we have um, two samples, not comparing a sample to a population, but a sample to another sample, that either is the same people at time one and time two, or that the samples have something in common. Maybe we're collecting data on pairs of identical twins, or pairs of sisters, or classes of kindergarten at the same elementary school. So they share something in common, even though we have um, data at two different times or from two different groups. So with a dependent samples or related samples t-test, we are going to go to analyze and compare means and use the paired samples t-test. Again, paired samples, dependent samples, related samples are all names that you'll see in different textbooks. With a paired samples t-test, what we want to do um, is make sure that we're matching up those two sample groups so that we know that they have something in common. I'm going to reset this to show you how to put it in. Um, today's example, we're going to look at positive affect. We wanted to know whether people reported being in more positive moods and having more positive feelings after interacting with the horses as compared to their own scores before they petted the horses. So we have positive affect, which we put in for the first variable, and positive affect at time two that we put in for the second variable. So SPSS knows to link these two things together. You could actually do multiple paired sample t-tests at the same time and look at um, two pairs of people's reactions on many different outcomes, as long as you've paired them up. Today, to get you started, we'll stick with just one. Don't worry about options or bootstrap, but click OK. And when you get your paired sample statistics, like always, it will give you the descriptive stuff first. You need to report these. You need the sample size, which will stay the same because it's the same people at time one and time two. Their scores on the measure before time one and after time two interacting with the horses and the measure variance, um, the variability here with the standard deviation. It then shows you the correlation between the two scores. We would expect this to be high because the person has themselves in common then we will see some kind of relationship between their two sets of scores, especially as in this case, we're measuring about 20 minutes apart. So we would not expect them to be night and day different unless it was a miraculous treatment or they had some kind of brain injury or something. The other part for our inferential statistics that we want to look at is down here, right? You don't need most of this. This is um, more information about the details of the sample. But here, in looking at the t value, we've got a t statistic that's comparing the means before and after the horses, the degrees of freedom, which in a paired samples t test is n, the number of pairs, minus 1. So we had 66 people who answered the survey twice. Subtract 1, and we get 65. And here is our probability, or p value, our significance, um, which is small in this case. Remember, we usually set an alpha level of 0.05 when we're doing research, um, unless we're doing something a little more complicated. And so if our t value is big, far away from zero, and our significance value is small, less than our cutoff, then we are able to reject our null hypothesis, 
um, and say that it looks like we found a difference, which is what happened in this case. This T value is past the cutoff, which with an alpha level of 0.05 is going to be a T of 1.96, positive or negative. So this is beyond that cutoff and has a significant result. What that means is there's a difference. With a T value, if we get a negative sign, it means that second group is bigger. So in this case, people reported more positive mood after interacting with the horses than they did before interacting with the horses. This is, of course, with a two-tailed test. If we wanted to do a one-tailed test where we were specific that, hey, I don't just think there's going to be a difference. I think people are going to be happier after interacting with those ridiculously cute little horses. We could actually set up a one-tailed test that would um, make this result even a little bit more significant because we would be not just looking at both ends of the distribution, but only on that upper end. Right? And so we would be able to pick up a significant finding there with a little bit more of our distribution. Regardless, again, what we have here is a difference. Negative score means the second group is higher, and people really did report feeling happier and in a better mood after interacting with our little cuties. Thanks.